I played uh, lacrosse in high school, and most of my concussions were from that. I had five recorded concussions, but, um, you know, in hindsight, it's probably closer to nine or ten. So um, I had one really bad one in my junior year of high school in 2011. Uh, sort of a similar narrative to Gracie. I took about three weeks off. You know, I was completely out of commission with reading or understanding any math or anything like that and headaches and all that stuff. Um, so I tried going back to school. I was sort of facing pressures to keep playing sports and things like that. Um, so I went back to school, went back to playing lacrosse and suffered another one while I was already still, you know, having these symptoms. Um, and that really put me out of commission. So I ended up taking a year off high school. Um, and then during that time, I was just doing a lot of therapies, you know, seeing a lot of doctors, trying everything I could and sort of seeing what stuck. Um, and eventually I was able to graduate high school and on to University of Miami for undergrad and now law school. Oh, that's great. And then what are you still, what are you still dealing with today before this all went down? Uh, yeah, sure. So some of my big ones still are migraines. Still usually, you know, a daily, every other day migraine. Um, some of the cognitive stuff is, is what it is, but you sort of learn how to cope with it. You know, my memory might not be what it used to be, but those are things you learn how to work around and, um, sort of learn different ways to make it work through school. Um, some mental health things have still been really bad, you know, anxiety and depression. So getting help with those, practicing meditation, things like that, uh, those have really helped. So those are the big ones that still have stuck around. Um, yeah, well, that's a lot to deal with. But I mean, it's, I'm so glad to hear you're still having this great success, all things considered, right? right? Yeah. yeah, and what, has it gotten anything, anything gotten worse since you've been sort of stuck at home? Um, that's a good question. You know, I think it's hard for me, you know, I really thrive off a routine with all this. So it's hard to sort of get that um, taken away from you. So I'm trying to stay in my routine. Um, I've sort of taken it as an opportunity to do a lot of the things that I know help mitigate my symptoms. Um, now that I have the time for them. So things like I'm trying to be much better about meditation, I'm trying to be much better about exercising and eating right and doing all the things that help me feel better. Um, so yeah, in that sense, it's been hard, you know, obviously everyone's experiencing some sort of anxiety about the state of the world right now. Um, but I'm just trying to stay on a routine and now that I have the time really, uh, take time to do the things that have helped me the most. No, that's great. And, 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 you know, I appreciate your really positive attitude. You know, what do you, what is helping you keep that hope? What do you, and what's your message to everyone out there struggling? Yeah, sure. So when you guys first approached me, um, I sort of started to think about things I wish I had known when I was first going through this and sort of, I sort of made a list. Uh, the first one is just being patient and forgiving yourself. You know, recovery is not a straight line at all. You're going to have good days and bad days. And it is what it is, you know. Uh, it's okay to not be okay. You need to just allow yourself that and give yourself time. Don't get frustrated. Because um, what you have is very real. You know, there are times when I was first going through it when I would even convince myself that it wasn't a thing what I was going through. You know, it wasn't a real medical condition, things like that. You sort of touched on this in the introduction. Um, another big one is reaching out. You know, I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone about what was happening to me for a whole host of reasons. You know, I was embarrassed, shy. I felt like people didn't understand. Um, and I know it feels like no one understands what you're going through and most people probably won't be able to understand, but that doesn't mean they don't want to help, you know. Um, so many people want to help and they're willing to be there for you. And they might not know how to right away and they might not understand, but they're certainly willing to try. I found the more I reach out. So um, one of the best things I ever did to my, for myself was uh, talk to people that weren't going through this, but still wanted to be there for me. So finally opening up, 
opening up and reaching out was a huge one. Um, another big one for me that my parents sort of instilled in me after I started going back to school, particularly college, was to just ask for things. Um, you know, I obviously struggled and needed some help through school because of all my symptoms. Um, and I was really embarrassed to sort of use it as an excuse. You know, I was really hesitant to. Um, but I found that my parents always say, just ask. And the worst thing that would happen is they say no and you're in the same situation. But I found if you're just upfront and candid and honest with people, um, most people respond to that really well and are happy to help out. 